Hello everyone, it's time for another Sega compilation video. This time we're focusing on those that were made in the western part of the world. You're gonna run out of Genesis games eventually, I know it. <laughs> Someday. Oh, devil damn maybe, it. In, oh. maybe in the next couple of years. But with that oh. said, yep, our first game up to bat stars a cute little dolphin. His name? Echo the Dolphin. This devil damn franchise. He's a special kind of dolphin because, if you look in a bit, he's got stars on his head. What a happy, completely non, like, unassuming, cute game about a dolphin who has psychic abilities and not at all delving into Lovecraftian horror. Oh no, this is one of the most cute and cuddliest games out there. Totally don't, totally ignore the whole more... Um, subtle nature of the game's soundtrack. The stars in the Imagine sky. your head looked like the stars in the sky. That's what the dolphin says. Yep. Mm hmm. Because apparently dolphins can, dolphins can apparently have comprehensive speech if you um, use your sonar. Well, apparently, like it has been proven. I don't know if that's still the I don't know if that's still the case, but apparently, it is still scientifically proven that I guess dolphins have a brain almost comparable to humans. Really. I'll have to look that up. I remember reading it all the time, but let me just make sure that's not like some debunk theory. But also, wait, dolphins eat fish? Yeah, of course. What else are they dying on? Oh, that's. Oh, I guess that is true. Okay, oh, hello, Sonar. Yeah, they run on the food chain. Oh, How so high in the sky can you fly? Like well, I don't mean to brag, but I can reach the stars. I mean, do you see my head? Let me show you. I Whoa. can reach the highest. Mulligan. And boom! Oh god! Oh! What the? What happened to all the fishes? <gasps> and from that day forward, Echo was left alone. Now I'll say, that can actually be pretty unassumingly like, scary to players who weren't expecting that. Yeah, I mean, goddamn. What a mo what a total tone shift. Well, it's almost, out, it's almost like something out of a creepypasta where it just, it just suddenly happens. No warning, no cutscene, like... So, and apparently since we were the one dolphin that was out of the water, except for this one. Suddenly, great winds of water. I'm not gonna lie, some of the dialogue in this game can get a wee bit, uh, preachy. What's the upper left? Yeah. That, okay, so the upper left is our two bars. We have a air meter and a health meter. Obviously, if your air meter goes down, well, you kind of fall under. Obviously, well, in order to get... There. Yeah, because dolphins are mammals. They are not, you're not purebred fish. Ooh. Ow! Jellies. Nobody ever will love you, no names. Oh, they are blue. <laughs> okay, you can go down that mm -hmm. way. Sorry, I was double checking. So apparently, yeah, so there's a. So yeah, so the dolphin's brains are larger than humans. I don't know if that means they're outright smarter than us, but they are oh, fairly. Yeah, that's uh, what you're supposed to do. They are, they are considered one of the most intelligent species of. They are considered one of the smartest species of animal. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool and all. It's just that, well, they're still limited to their own biological nature. Ah. Oh, there you go. Ow. Okay, so health is important. How do we get health? To get more health, you obviously gotta dash into, dash into small schools of fish. Mm -hmm. Crap, we need more schools of fish, oh, but I can't dark. see any. There's there some. All Eat things considered, though, it's a little finicky to actually charge, in, charge into certain things, because... I mean, yeah, like, if you've heard the stories before, it still holds true now. This game hasn't really aged that well. How about the 3D sequel? <sighs> that game's a piece of shit. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just one of those games where you only you only check them out for the sake of complete curiosity, and then you pretty much trade it in, like, about a day or two later. Aw, oh, but you gotta at least look at that creepy final boss. <laughs> yeah, that oh-so-child-friendly final boss. Yeah, yeah, it's, it should be said, like, the reason why all this happened is aliens. Yeah, you gotta pretty much. A, you gotta fight a big mother alien, and... Like, this music This music feels like something out of a LucasArts game. Ow! Ow! Wait, that wasn't there beforehand. It kind of does, now that you mention it, but, um... No, it wasn't. <gasps> oh, Orca! Orca. Say giant diamond. Cute. Wonder what the orca has to say to me. I know not what has happened to your pod. That means a school of dolphins. Perhaps the big blue will help you. The big How? blue? You must travel past the undercaves to find him. Him. 
Plus me a giant whale. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> okay, goodbye, Orca. So what's that crystal actually? Is that is that a save point? I maybe? Honest it's just again this game gets this game's not very good at good at conveyance, so it's very hard it's pretty hard to well understand the look of what's even going oh. on in the game. Oh look at the orca's back. Orca hmm. back. Right. It's like Hello, did you like my little disappearing act there? But I'm um, just, yeah, like this, this game's all sorts of confusing, even for a child. So it's like, it's kind of no, it's kind of a no-brainer why this game kind of fell off, it kind of fell into obscurity for a good while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much so that I mean, bless his heart, the creator did try to do like some sort of Kickstarter campaign to try to do like a spiritual successor to the series, and apparently didn't really meet meet the numbers he wanted. Well, I mean, because like people can say like the game had a lot to it, but. But, but at the end of the day, I feel like people remember the tone and the crazy, like, twist at the very end in terms of its tone more so than the actual gameplay. Yeah, the gameplay is just what kind of dull and monotonous. Oh, pause. Oh, that's just, oh, that's that's just pausing. Just yeah, the that's that. Oh, Echo dies, the end. Echo dies, and now he's... Ooh, Victor Man. Yep, we will have a better star to um, showcase oh. in this little look at. So before Blue Sky went into films, they made some games. I guess so. Assuming it's the same. So yeah, this is, this is probably one of their more mo noteworthy games. This is Vector Man. What is Vector Man? Vector Man is pretty much Sega's answer to Donkey Kong Country. It's a game mostly comprised of a trash collector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically Vector Man is like um, mostly relies on high rendered CG graphics for its graphical capabilities, and, well, it just it had something to prove, I guess. Wow, this is only 31 years from now, now. Jesus Christ. Well, really, well, is it really gonna get that bad? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna live, I'm gonna hopefully live, I, I say hopefully, I'm gonna hopefully live to see the year 2050, jeez. <laughs> hopefully I'll get to see the year where we can actually traverse beyond the stars. Unpowerful Orbot. <gasps> Orbot. Well, I'm the star of my own game. <laughs> hey, am I in the game too, Barry? So, yeah, this is this is literally what Orbot will be like in the year 2049. So apparently a robot takes over. <laughs> basically, basically some idiot put in, put in some nuclear warhead into his circuitry and he just becomes a dic dictator's overlord hell-bent on destruction. And it's up to Vector Man, a usual uh, gar garbage uh, disposing robot, to save the day. Alrighty. Uh. So, here, come, here he is in his balls-filled glory. Okay, uh, how, looks like it's a Mega Man style platformer. Yep, basically. Uh, you have a little, you have a little pew pew laser, which you can pretty much aim just in pretty much any direction. And um, Vector Man's also pre-equipped with a double jump, which is pretty nifty. Okay. Oh, oh. ow! But okay. yeah, this is basic. But yeah, basic. Basically, yeah, this this is just one of those games that has something to prove. Because oh. look at these, look at these high re high end graphics. Looks pretty nice. Uh, mm -hmm. What are those things up top? Are those stamps or cameras or? They're they're televisions. You basically have to break open in order to get nifty power ups. Whether it be like a health extension, a uh, weapon change, or the very occasional uh, little morphing item, which lets you transform into all sorts of weird um, shapes to help get you through get you through the level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like we're about to see right now. True. Ow. <laughs> so yeah. How do you like my sick moves? <laughs> yeah, you see that back there? No biggie. <laughs> I'm, I do this shit on a daily basis. I'm so sorry. Some of the rendering reminds me of Wild Woody. Oh god. Wild Woody? Wild Woody. I think that came out roughly. I think that game, that game came out the same year as this. Huh. I think wasn't Wild Woody also Genesis? No, uh, close. It was uh, 32. Oh uh, no, uh, Sega CD. Okay. Um, and to, uh, to say, spoilers, we're not doing Wild Woody. It's a broken game. It's, yeah, it's a mess. Gotcha. Weird soundtrack, so, too. Apparently had, like, some metal rock guy. It was an okay soundtrack. I mean, the graphics themselves weren't too bad. Save for the CG cutscenes. <laughs> wow, Woody. But, um, anyway. Putting down, the wood, putting down the wood, let's go back to Vector Man real quick. Like, yeah, sorry. I mean, this slick dude's so awesome, he actually got a second game to himself, which came out like a year later, and, well, I do believe in that game, instead of dealing with, a, instead of dealing with a warhead-infused Orbot, you had to deal with an army of mutated bugs. 
Whoa. Whoa. Cool. And it was kind of a darker game for it, but maybe I'll show that one off a little later. So here's our first boss. A random Harrier Jack. Wow. Ooh. And a bunch of wrecking balls. No, it's a carrier. It's a carrier. I will also I will also say a nice little touch. I do like the lighting on him whenever he fires his energy yeah. blaster. Oh yeah, this game had, again. This game had something to prove. It tried to do just about it. It tried to prove its damnedest that the Genesis can still compete with the Super Nintendo in this day and age, even though people have already sort of shifted over by this point. It was a little too late. Mm -hmm. Sonic can only sway the masses for so long before everyone realized it was kind of an underpowered console. Yeah. But hey, just, oh, I mean, oh, that oh, don't mind that. <laughs> ha. See, come on, photons. Alright, so this was, um, well, I'm trying to think. And so it was only the second game, and that's all I had? Metalhead. Yeah, only two games. Um, there was, there was, there were. Oh my god. Oh boy. That is cool. Yeah, it looks weird. It's ugly, isn't it? But, um, anyway, like, I do, ow. So, um, I do remember there was actually going to be uh, plans to revive the uh, the uh, IP through the PS2. And looking back on it, I could sort of see why it was canceled. Like, kind of looked ugly. Oh. It felt very... You know you know that whole phase when an I when, when they try to re reboot an IP and make it all dark and gritty? Uh, yeah, like Mom. That's like essentially Mom. what they were trying to do with Vector Man. Uh, it was his mm -hmm. own Bomberman Zero. More or less... I mean, granted, the visuals in this game can get pretty dark and gritty as they are, but they still have a sort of, they still have a sort of identity to them that feels a little more lighter yeah. than those. Yeah. Let's say, goodness, that was a lot because you have to dodge everything. Usually, it doesn't give me that much, that much, much shit, but there, here we are. So yeah, that was rather something. Boom! Oh. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Try it again. Fucker! It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. And moved on to a different game. <laughs> Cat, get out of here. And now for our final look at, and unfortunately this one was kind of an awkward case because this never got re-released on Steam, so I had to do it through an end of mm. Okay, well, what game is it that you are so eager to show us? Well, for those of you that have ever owned the, Super, the Sonic Mega Collection Plus on PS2 and Xbox, this is one of the unlockable games it came with. A very un-Sonic game. Dr. Mm. D. Kane. Ha. <gasps> Whoa. This is how our story we began. It all starts in a power plant. A sludge infested power plant, as it were. Oh. Where Milo was doing his usual day job. It does look like Milo Thatch. It does. <laughs> but of course, appar apparently he learned of something he probably shouldn't have, and as luck would have it, the boss found out. And before he could be before he could blow the whistle, he found himself trapped and injected oh my god. With the There's... Operation Omega itself. And yep, dunked and it. just dumped Whoa. in a toilet. That's a bit overkill. They got, oh my god, so is he like dissolving? So I, they, yeah. Oh my god, they dissolved him with acid, flushed him down the toilet, and now he'll be Venom. <laughs> we are Venom. Not quite. I will say that. He became Whoa. the ooze. Uh, this, is this is reminding me a little bit of, in of Inhumanoids. The Ooze. I guess I've heard of that one. But yeah, welcome to The Ooze for the Sega Genesis, made by the Sega Technical Institute, the same bastards that made Comic Zone and almost made Sonic Extreme before that got canned. Okay, I'm I, I, again, I'm still saying, if someone wants to make a Kickstarter to bring back Comic Zone, like, to even, to even go the extra mile with having, like, differing art styles, I'd be up for that. I would be too. That would be pretty neat, actually. It would definitely have more put into it than fucking, um... What was that one game that Twisted Pixel made? Uh, Comic Jumper? Yeah, oh yeah, Comic Jumper's awesome. It was pretty neat, though I will admit some of the humor did kind of flow over my head. It was, yeah, it, but it was kind of cool. It was funny. It was a uh, nice touch detail how they did, like, change the appearance and art style, at least. But, but yeah, no, Comic Zone, like, that actually looked really cool to me. And I'm glad we got to show that game off, because that was fun. It was really fun, albeit incredibly difficult. <laughs> yes. And, and, this game is, and this game here is no exception. So, what kind of game is this? So, with this game, you are the ooze. And look at that, we just came out of a sewer pipe, and we're ready to wreak havoc. Ooh. Now, let it be known, that entire ooze is not, not, just your, not just your old body, it's also your health meter. If, oh, it drains, if it drains a certain amount, then you automatically die. And those slugs eat ooze. 
Yes, they eat ooze. Oh. Not, but, oh. well, okay, that was kind of dumb. Yep. Blow up. Oops. Down you go. Trust me. So, Trust me, I'm better than that. <laughs> so, how, what is the objective of the game? Basically, you have to go through every level while also finding these um, pieces of, of atoms, I guess. I'm not sure if they serve a, serve a purpose outside of just being random uh, special collectibles. But, yeah, basically you just have to go through the level, try to not mind your mind your oozy appearance, because, well, again, like, the the mooks can eat it, but you can still gain some yourself, so you can end up being a giant, ginormous blob of grotesque destruction. Oh. Speed mode. Yep, and you get all sorts of speed, too. Okay, so yellow makes you faster. What should also be said is that you also... Yeah. Uh -huh. um, not only that, um... Your only, way, your only method of attacking enemies is actually um, spew out little goo balls, which, while it does sort of deplete your deplete your own goo, goo meter, uh, you can still earn more yourself. So it's kind of like a versus, right. versus reward sort of system. Okay, I'll say the re the rendering on the ooze itself is pretty mm. good for this game. Yeah, for what it was worth, like, they did try what they could to make the game actually look like something. Also, also I'm so sorry, this music Genesis. here. What about the music? When, when it when it was at the course, it was mining of the. Nice. Oh god damn it! I like, can like, sort of hear it. Like here, when it when it picks up again, I'm like, wait. Like like the guitar riff in your right it. ear. It's the same melody. I can sort of hear it. Yeah. It's not the same notes, but it's the rhythm. But the uh, island. I'm sorry. I, I, I was thinking of that thing Matt showed me. The... He's an asshole. <laughs> is there ever a point in the game where you can actually evolve from being a puddle into the actual, like, ooze itself, or are you always a puddle? I want to say you're always a puddle like this, but I'm just going to Oh, wait, right here, right here, wait. Yeah, it did the exact same melody. I knew yeah. it wasn't crazy. I uh, always knew Butch Hartman was a hack. We can never get out without saying it. Uh, so then, what, um... But yeah, you were saying? So yeah, um, I guess it should be said, like... I don't have that much, um, experience with this oh. game, because... Oh, that's a cheap shot. I don't, I don't really have that much experience with this game, because, um, like, again, it was like that one random unlockable that you can get in Sonic Mega Collection Plus, and mm -hmm. it's like, what the <laughs> fuck is this game, and why do I keep dying? Not sure. And why does it look so unpretty? And why is it associated with Sonic, of all people? I, again, I don't know. It's like, it feels like that weird oddity of a game that just... You see it on one in one compilation, but then they never release it anywhere else. And I don't know why. So it looks like there are... So it looks like there are... Uh, there, there are a number of stages, quite a, quite a lot of them, actually. And there's a part one, part two, and there's one DNA in each of them. Mm -hmm. You collect all, like, 30 or 60 or something. I want to say there's at least two of them in every stage. You just gotta look hard enough. So to can it, and so it looks like the risk reward system is that the bigger you are, the larger your hitboxes. Yep, but also the but it also but and uh, there's also certain obstacles where you also have to be careful because you can probably you know it's like it's like that case where you could end up like sliding off an obstacle yeah. or whatever and just your entire self falls in and you lose life. Uh -huh. At least that's what I get out of some of the videos I've seen of this game. But just. You hear it too now. Uh, now I can never run here. Now, Ooh. I there's Sorry. certain ways I've always wanted to remember Danny Phantom. This is not through one of not oh. one of those means. I mean, I could see this guy. I'm saying I could see this guy being a Danny Phantom villain too. He probably. He, um, I'm, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Um, I think there might have been like a, like a standard like mini mook in, in a similar vein to this, but I don't remember like a whole episode main villain guy that's in this vein. Makes sense. I mean, look at I mean, look at this ugly piece of shit. Does he does he scream? Does he scream anything more than a mook? I don't know. So I guess so. I guess million dollar question: How many of these games have you actually beaten, James? Like uh, the games out of all the games I've shown off for this look at, none of them. Aww. I mean, I think it's. I think I got at least a. I think I got at least around halfway through Vector Man, but otherwise, that's a bad ad. Okay. Well, there we go. Like, in fact, this play, this little look at I'm doing of um, Ooze is the first time I've played the game in, like, years. Okay. Oxydum Part 2. 
Part two. The Will we see part two? Sure he says. I guess so. Okay, cool. And yeah, we're doing good. We, we've almost collected all of the DNAs. And for those wondering why I'm not showing off certain other uh, Western-styled um, Genesis games, like, say, Toe Jam and Earl, that one I kind of want to save for a special occasion, because I think that one deserves, I agree. deserves its own um, Honestly, video. I think what we okay. should do, um, unless it's something you plan on doing already, I think we should have both Toe Jam and Earl and Panic on Funko Troll and be like a uh, video in and of themselves. Oh. What the? Oh, we were... Oh, crap, we that's, were too close to the edges. Considering it. Oh, God. <laughs> help me! Help me! Help! Help! Stay close He's to the edges. He's out of control! Fire! Oh. Fire oh, ban. We're being gulped up! Well, that's that. And that's it, game over. Crap. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be able to beat this without, like, using cheats. Because they, they don't give you many lives, do they? You lose. How demeaning. You lose. And this was his fate. To become Double a lava damned. lamp. For the evil fat cousin to Lex Luthor. Jeez, for the Mandarin. Honestly, in a way, I don't, rem I don't know why. That looks like something I'd expect out of a mask. I can see it. Yeah, probably makes sense. <laughs> but on that note, anyway. ladies and gentlemen, that that is it for our look at on a few um, Western-made Sega Genesis games. I mean, yeah, some of them are a bit like at least the first two are a little iconic in a way, but you know, but there's they still fell into the the bottom recesses of obscurity and that's kind of why we have that's why we only know like some of the more interesting ones like streets of rage shinobi toe jam and earl what have you mm -hmm. but on that note um i'm james may extreme i'm lucky jack 20 i am the retired <laughs> anyway take care everybody <laughs> see you guys da -da -da -da.